you know, a lot of things got thrown at us, whether it was COVID, the post-COVID impact as well, particularly in China, whether it was the hawkish Fed, the Reserve Bank of India as well was hiking rates. The Russia-Ukraine war, that's what put pressure on inflation. Globally, you saw inflation prices that spiked up. Crude oil prices up by close to around 20 percent, all this in the, you know, in the last year or so. And high inflation scenarios, still, in fact, the Nifty managed to hold on. Well, supply side issues as well was another worry. And the FIs, as we were just discussing, well, they sold close to around $30 billion, and yet the Nifty didn't fall apart. That's telling you the kind of participation we had from the retail audience as well out here. And in the currency market, well, there was a relative outperformance out there because the rupee depreciated, yes, by around 10 percent, but the dollar index itself moved from around 95 all the way to around 114 or so. And if you compare India with the rest of the globe, the U.S. markets were under pressure. The European markets as well were under pressure. They were down anything between 5 to around 20 percent. And even some of those, uh, you know, other Asian markets, they saw a lot of pressure, barring, uh, you know, the latter market. The Brazilian index was a relative outperformer. And the Nifty as well was a close second, you know, with uh, being more or less uh, flattish in the last one year or so. Within India, FMCG did very well. Auto sector as well did very well, uh, you know, in the last one year. And the PSU banking names, you know, they were something that did pretty well. IT did see some pressure points, and the small cap index as well was down. Let's run you through some of those big movers then on the Nifty itself. New entrant, you had, uh, you know, a couple of those names in there. But first, the losers. Some of those stocks from the IT pack, well, they were under pressure. You had the Wies Laboratory as well that was under pressure. And in fact, uh, you know, the commodity-related names, whether it was a BPCL in there, Tata Steel, Ultratech, all of them did see some selling. And HDFC Life, a distinct underperformer out there. But some big gainers, Adani Enterprises, well, it's made its way into the Nifty, and that's given you big returns. And just take a look at the screen. Some of those rare entities, Coal India, Power Grid, as well as NTPC, PSUs in there, that were relative outperformers. I don't remember the last time that happened. The Royal Enfield as well from the auto pack did pretty well. But there were some losers, and they are all up for you on the screen. Some of them seem to have lost their way. Goodrich Properties, you had India Bulls Housing Finance, IEX, India March, some of these stocks, well, they ran away a goodish bit and then they came in for some profit taking. But let's wind this down with some of those big gainers. You know, HAL out of nowhere, the defense play, TVS Motors as well continues to run ahead, and a couple of those PSU banking names in there as well, up and about in the last one year or so. But guys, it's still a happy Diwali because despite all the challenges that we had, the Nifty was still more or less flat.